Welcome back. We've been talking about Dataverse security. And so this is going to be a series of lots of videos about some security topics for Dataverse and Dynamics 365 CE. You just missed a video about getting started, so I encourage you to go back and check that one out. And today we're going to talk about security roles. So to get started, what even is a security role? A security role defines the rights to edit particular rows based on the owner of that row and the user's relationship to the owner. So a role that I have, a security role, is assigned to a specific business unit and there's a mirrored copy of it in every business unit um, that is a child of that business unit. Generally, I'm gonna recommend that you create these security roles in the root business unit so that you can put them in a solution and it just keeps things much simpler right? So I do want to talk a little bit about if you want to use an out of the box role or a custom role, because sometimes we might want to just use the roles that Microsoft provides us. And maybe that works for your organization. But I do want you to take a look at them and check them, right? And sometimes we might try and use a fully custom role, but there can be some drawbacks to that as well because there could be little permissions that you might be missing or not know that you need, right? So what I generally encourage you to do is take one of those system roles and make a copy of it and then remove the permissions that you don't need, right? So this would be taking, say, the salesperson role and cleaning up uh, maybe there's delete access, maybe they have um, access to leads that you're not using, something like that, cleaning up and removing all those permissions that you don't need, but then it will make sure that you leave some of those silly things like user access to a view and things like that. You want to check that you still have the right permissions to be able to access the system. So usually what I'd also encourage you to do is to create that one base role. So take your salesperson, create that as a base role, remove the stuff you don't need, and then create blank security roles on top of that for any additional permissions that only select groups of users have. And an example of that might be export to Excel or something. So within each security role, you have this lovely grid. And what's going to happen is each table has multiple privileges that we're going to talk about. And then you define the access level for each of those privileges. And then additionally, we have the miscellaneous per permissions at the bottom of the form. Let's talk about what each of these privileges means. So create, that's when you're creating the record for the first time, saving it for that first time. And if you can create it, you also need to be able to read it means you can see it. If you want to write it, that means you can edit a particular row. Delete, generally I don't want you to give that to anyone because that means you can remove that record completely from the system. Instead, I'd encourage you to just give people write access and they can deactivate a record instead of deleting it. Then we have append and append to. And these are a little bit confusing. Generally, I give both of them because it means if I have append, that means I can set the lookup on this row to another table, right? If I have append to, that means this row can be selected in that lookup. So if I'm connecting my account with my primary contact, I need append access on my account and append to on my primary contact. Um, but it's very confusing and <laughs> kind of goes back and forth figuring these out. A lot of times you're going to need to be connecting these records back and forth. So I'll generally assign both of those permissions. Um, assign allows you to change the owner of a record and share allows you to share with someone else and give someone else access. And we're going to talk about sharing a little bit more later. So within each of these privileges, you define the access level. And that's kind of how full that little bubble is. And these terms, the terms for a lot of these things have changed recently. So I'm going to try and use the new terms, but we're also probably going to go back and forth a little bit. None, no permission, easy. User or basic permission means I can see the records that I own. Right, so if there are multiple accounts, I can only see the accounts where I am the owner. Next, we have business unit or local. 
That means that any one, I can see rows that anyone in my business unit owns. I'm in the sales business unit and I'm looking at accounts. I can see accounts that any of my fellow salespeople in the sales business unit own. But if marketing has a separate business unit, I cannot see those records. Uh, Deep access or parent-child business unit means I can see things in my business unit and all of the children business unit. Um, And then organization or global means I can see all rows. So generally organization is the easiest and the fastest. I know that doesn't always work in all organizations, but it's worth discussing and seeing if it's a possibility for you. Then we come to our miscellaneous permissions. And these are all things that can be turned on or off. These are things like export to Excel, as you can see here, bulk delete, publishing things, publishing duplicate detection rules here, things like that. Things that don't have, uh, maybe they don't have a table assigned, they don't have rows assigned, but they do require specific access. So as I talked about in the last video, you want to be on the lookout for dangerous permissions. These are things that I think could be concerning in your security role. So you want to be aware of them. Make sure there's a reason for them and make sure your organization is aware of any potential risks and you've documented why why people have this and maybe if there's additional training in place. So some things that I like to keep out is delete that we talked about let them deactivate instead. We have bulk delete. Um, We have things like creating quick campaigns. Do you want a user to be able to create a large volume of email or a large volume of tasks from your system? Maybe you don't want quick create, right? Also, we have export to Excel. When you export, the access is the same for all the tables, right? So I can't say you can export accounts, but you can't export contacts. This could be a concern in some places, right? If you're keeping, say, social security number on your contact, you might not want your users to be able to export that data, or you might require they have specific training or something like that. So that's something to keep an eye on. And we also have things like bulk edit, bulk delete, Be careful with those and just make sure if users have them that they also have the proper training. Now, also keep in mind there's a few special security roles. So what we talked about earlier is that we might not want to use the -the out-of-the-box security roles, but unfortunately, there's a few cases where we do still need to use them. And so one example is like the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook user. This is a role that needs to be assigned to be able to get the Outlook app for Dynamics 365. So that's a case where this role needs to be assigned to a user. Another example might be flow approvals. There's a specific role for that that needs to be assigned to the user. And so just be aware of those and make sure you're assigning them as needed. I also want to talk a little bit about roles that might come from your partner or a software vendor that you're working with. When you're working with these vendors or you're getting some kind of partner solution, sometimes they might require users have a role to use that solution. And I encourage you to look closely at what permissions are in that role. Because these permissions, like we've talked about on our previous video, all of your security permissions are going to be gather together and the user will get the least restrictive access. So maybe I don't have users that have access to all contacts, right? But if I get a role from a partner, this could be giving access to all those contacts or all the accounts that you don't want to assign, right? So I encourage you to look at those and then talk with the partner or the vendor to get that role updated, right? To make sure it only has the exact access that they need to use the solution and not additional access that is outside of what you want. And you do want to work with that vendor to update the solution. I think sometimes we want to just fix it in our environment and be okay with it. But keep in mind, if you get a new version of that solution, then it would have those permissions back again that you don't want, right? So I do encourage you to make sure that you're working with them, working closely with your vendors and getting this, getting these roles set the way you want them to be. 
So that's all I have on security roles for today. So I encourage you to like and subscribe and get ready for the next video tomorrow.